Good evening. Calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Wednesday, June 21st, 2023. I am Select Board Chair Eric Helmuth. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, signed into law on March 29th, 2023, which further extend certain COVID-19 measures regarding remote participation in public meetings until March 31st, 2025. Before we begin, we begin please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting, although in this meeting we do not have a public comment period, so that is not especially applicable. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board's agendas and minutes page. And we have all five members of the select board here tonight. Let's do a final sound check um, for Attorney Heim who's joining us remotely. Uh, Mr. Attorney Heim, are you able to hear me and um, follow the meeting? I'm able to hear you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> okay, so the only item on tonight's special meeting is the Minuteman School District School Committee representative. So shortly before the meeting started, we drew uh, names at random to determine the order of the candidates. And uh, I'll just give a quick rundown as to how I see this going this evening. So we'll go one by one. Um, when a candidate comes up, invite them to speak to us for a maximum of five minutes. Um, and I've told each of them that you can speak for a lot less than that, and that's fine. It's up to you, no, no judgments here. Um, after that time, the board uh, we'll have an opportunity to ask each candidate right there in the session um, some questions. Following that, each candidate, I'll give the opportunity for each candidate to ask the board some questions. And, you know, we may need some guidance from Attorney Heim or from myself, um, but I think I would encourage those questions to be anything that you want to know about board members' um, priorities uh, for, the, for the school or vision for, for the, the uh, Minuteman representative. Um, Attorney Heim, do you have any, any uh, comment or question on, on the scope of questions that the candidates could ask the board? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. I, I think that the thing that I would want folks to understand is that the Minuteman Regional Agreement does not provide much in the way of any detail for uh, the appointment process or um, even really discuss qualifications. So this is really uh, best practices uh, oriented towards the board getting information it needs to make an informed decision. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, any questions from my colleagues? All right, so uh, let us begin. I'll call up my trusty iPhone timer. And um, uh, Ms. Marr, the first person on our list is? Will be Ann Horgan. Ann Horgan, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much. Good evening. So, um, Please feel free to tell us why, why you're interested, what you sure. bring to the committee, and what your vision for the participation is. Absolutely. So um, I have spent all of my uh, professional and adult career really uh, advocating for children and being involved in organizations that have built their resilience. I, um, and for the majority of my career, uh, with boards and, and uh, with my work, lived and worked in Arlington. Uh, in addition to uh, being a resident of Arlington, I uh, ran the uh, Jermaine Lawrence School, which for many years uh, in Arlington Heights worked with uh, adolescent girls. Um, I was on the board of the uh, Arlington Counseling Center and I also served on the board of the Arlington Children's Theater. So again, all children focused, youth focused, um, and in a variety of capacities. The school committee position was not something that I expected. I saw it, I said, 
you know, I had recently stepped down from my position as the chair at the Arlington Children's Theater. I had felt at the time that the transition of a new leader had happened, that we had spent the pandemic really adjusting to that. We had a new leader in, we had established that new leader made the adjustment and the transition from a long time leader to a new leader. Uh, and we had built a new board. And at that time I thought, this is a good time for me to move on. Uh, because I think that's one of the hardest things that you do as a leader is the transition of a leader. Especially when you have a strong, charismatic person who has led and uh, had a vision for where they wanted to go. To bring somebody new into the, to a system that was very used to something that was very clear to them, a relationship that they had, etc., is a very big deal for an organization. One of the things that I really see as a critical function of the Minuteman District School Committee for the next three to five years is the transition of a new leader. The, um, and that's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do. And you can't, um, and it takes a lot of work and a lot of vision. So that's one thing that I think that we see for Minuteman coming up, and it's a um, action and an activity that I've been involved in a variety of different ways across many organizations. The other thing I really see as a, a focus and a commitment, in addition to the day-to-day -day operation of a, a school committee, is that we um, have children that were the victims of a global pandemic. And their school experiences, their social experiences, their uh, learning was all impacted by this pandemic. We can't go back. The pandemic is gone, but we can't say, okay, we'll just go back to the way things were. We have to go forward. We have to acknowledge that there has been an impact on children in addition to all of the other social issues that they're facing. And we have to make sure that our schools, which really provide a very strong social community, a very um, clear place where children build resilience uh, in their life, is really prepared moving forward to take advantage of the technology <laughs> that we've learned how to use, but also to... <laughs> Still mostly, learning. Mostly Hello. Learned how to use <laughs> They've learned how to use it. <laughs> um, <laughs> to take advantage of that, but also to say what can we and what do we have to change about the way that we approach children and their needs uh, during this time. We have about a minute left. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, about a minute left. Good. That's fine. Yeah. Um, finally, I just want to say that I had a son who graduated from Arlington High School. I have a daughter who graduated from Minuteman. I have really had the opportunity to see the very strong high school that we have. Minuteman is an equally strong organization. Very different. They should complement each other. They should not be the same as each other. They meet the needs of different children in different ways, and I value that greatly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Five minutes goes fast. <laughs> <laughs> so at this time, I'd uh, welcome any questions uh, for my colleagues at the Hamden. Um, I guess uh, I, I'll question? just have a ru sure. running question for everyone, sure. just because this is a, a new process for yeah. me. And um, we've, we've read all the letters and correspondence that we've received, and um, I've contacted Lex Media, mm -hmm. had them send me um, the recordings of minutes of meetings. Mm -hmm. um, I also listened to the teachers' union president, unions very. Um, near and dear to me, mm -hmm. as well as my colleague. I don't mean to say I'm the only one. Uh, as well as I listened to, uh, I think it's Acting Superintendent Mahoney. Mm -hmm. He did like a 45 second, one minute um, mm -hmm. videotape remark, and I'm very impressed by his remarks in terms of uh, finishing the school year out with a bang on a high note, as well as accessibility and transparency. So I have a question that's more to educate me. So, so I would ask each one of the um, applicants, candidates, the same question. What is or what do you see your role if you are Arlington's representative on the Minuteman School Committee in terms of interfacing, communicating, 
advocating or educating the parents who in turn are the voices for the children. Because people have asked me, what, what does this position do? Mm -hmm. And I've, I've read the new contract in that. So um, just if you could give me, you know, whatever you want, a 30-second of what you see that answer sure. to that question. Sure. Uh, the school uh, committee, which I will in my head refer to as board, right, just because that's my experience, uh, their role is to ensure that the school does what they say they're going to do. Um, it determines the direction, the uh, meets the mission, meets the goals. And so as a member of the school committee, you represent the public. You represent the parents. You represent the customers, right? And so you can't go in, um, you know, and as we think about this, I'm like coming in, my daughter does not go there anymore. Right? To be a board member when your child is a part of something means you go in with a frame saying, how do I meet the need of my child? Right? This is really about meeting the need of every child and representing the parents in Arlington on that board to ensure that the unique place that Minuteman plays in the lives of the children in Arlington is true to its mission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Thank you for your interest in the position. Unfortunately, when you go first. I know, I that's know. okay. <laughs> Everyone else gets to hear the questions. Yeah. Because they're going to be like, this, they're going to ask the same that's questions. Okay. That's okay. That's free fun. <laughs> and it looks like we're neighbors. So. <laughs> Hello, neighbor. Um, just as a parent of a student that went through Minuteman, are there, I mean, I love Minuteman. I think it's amazing. Yeah, but are there any improvements or that you would advocate for? Are there any n new programs that you think that the school could use mm -hmm. um, if you were to become a board member that you would kind of go on day one, say this is kind of my baby and I want to start rolling this out? Sure, sure. Well, I think one of the things that uh, I experienced, and this is uh, really such a wonderful uh, organization with all the different trades, right? Um, what I really think would strengthen the school is that not only the children who are in like a student government or run a club or do whatever, that, that within the trades they're really given the opportunity to envision how they themselves might apply that trade to the school. So for example, my daughter was an environmental science major. She had a great uh, interest, for example, in recycling. So given that, would there be an opportunity for that trade to spearhead a project where they researched, looked at the costs and values, and introduced something? She didn't get very far in that, that project, but I think it's a good example of how kids with special interests, which Minuteman really caters to, could really contribute and get that same kind of co-op experience at their school. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Ms. Fulgen, for your willingness to uh, sure. step forward with your application. Just a question, a comparison question. You mentioned your son went to Arlington High, your mm -hmm. daughter went to Minuteman, and, and one of the things that we've heard uh, a lot these past several months is communication, questions about communication, perhaps the need for more communication. I'm just wondering, in your experience as a parent, both here at Arlington High versus Minuteman, what things did you see either district really could could do a better job or, or things that you liked that they sure Arlington Public Schools were mm -hmm. doing that maybe Minuteman should be doing and vice versa. Sure. What it would really impress me about the Minuteman community is that they treated parents like they were a part of the community. At Arlington High School I felt like I had a more distant role, um, that the communication was uh, more static. Uh, that um, the, you know, my son's experience really, I had to find out a lot of it through his experience. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the unique thing about Minuteman is that not only did we hear from the principal, we heard from the trade teachers. They communicated with us, um, uh, and I'll give the end of the year as an example. We got reassurance from our trade teachers that the school year would continue and be valuable to students, right? 
So I think as a parent, uh, the, the ability to reach somebody, but the ability to hear from a variety of people, not just the one spokesperson, really made a difference for parents um, and really made a difference, I think, then in the children's lives because the parents really felt like they were a part of the community as well. Thank you. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, thank you um, for, for stepping up for this. Um, you know, the, um, the board is inter it's an interesting makeup to the board, you know, because of the weightings. And, and instead of I mean, you having maybe two or three and, um, representatives from Arlington in order to compensate for the weighting, you have one person yeah. you know, that has 30% of the vote. And um, so I mean, what are your thoughts about the current um, dynamics on the board? Mm -hmm. and, and how do you feel that your leadership style um, will fit into um, that dynamic. Sure, thank you. Well, uh, the curious thing about having a board that's made up in terms of town representation, I think, right, is that each town wants to make sure that they are, or each person from each town wants to make sure that their town is represented. That the unique aspects, the unique uh, conditions, the relationship works for Arlington. At the same time, we know that unless you have many people who share, who come in through different lenses and not thinking the same way, you really don't have a strong board because you need to be able to push back and learn from each other what works well in different ways, what works well when you're doing it the same what works well when you are uh, kind of reflecting in different ways or through different lenses on things. So I think that the, uh, the strength of the Minuteman Board is that you have all of these towns that come together towards one purpose and that strengthening, in this case, this school district so that it really meets, again, that unique place that the technical school holds. Thank you. Um, my question is, I think that a person in this position has to represent a lot of, of constituencies. Mm -hmm. Students, they have to think you know, first and foremost. Uh, but in my view, the Arlington representative is the Arlington representative, and so there's a responsibility to represent the town of Arlington's interests yes. as well, whether mm -hmm. those be financial or educational. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you, what, what are your thoughts on if you were in this position, how you would represent the town of Arlington's interests on the board and your priorities? Sure. Well, I think the first thing is really understanding the town, understanding the, the role that, that this school plays in the town. I think that um, I have uh, been involved with a lot of different kinds of constituencies in the town of Arlington whether it's through my work and interaction uh, with, at Jermaine Lawrence and my interaction with the neighbors, with the police department, with uh, the town uh, in various ways, through my uh, work with the Youth Counseling Center and kind of seeing the, the uh, town through that lens and working very closely with them, and then kind of seeing uh, people through the Arlington Children's Theater where really in many ways the goal of that organization was to give children a place again to belong in a unique way. So that um, throughout all of those things, right, you have to understand what the priorities of the town are. And so I think that it's really about being very involved, being able to, for example, come to these kind of uh, meetings, to be aware of what the town is uh, challenged by, the uh, fiscal responsibilities not just of the school but of the town, and all of these kinds of things. So I think that that really being aware of in communication with a variety of different people in the town to understand the town's priorities allows you then to be at Minuteman representing that in the best way. Thank you. Uh, I think I'll ask one other question and I will endeavor to ask the same questions of everybody as well. To the extent that you can see this from your perspective mm -hmm. um, as a community member, obviously not having privy to all the information in the board uh, that the, the school committee would have, uh, what is your sense for the direction of Minuteman School in its, you know, its current trajectory? And, and I'm thinking especially, I mean, there are, there are some, some personnel issues that are being grappled with right now, but I'm thinking as much 
speak about that if you want, but also just educationally, that the model that the school mm -hmm. has, has, is, has, is taking, is there a change in that? Is that change positive or negative? You know, I'm interested in your views on that and, uh, and whatever those views are, how you would approach learning about that and, mm -hmm. and looking to get involved as, as an influential member with 24% of the vote you know, sure. on, on the committee. Sure. Well, I really think, um, from my perspective, that what the school is doing is really establishing itself in a stronger and stronger position to um, offer a variety of pathways for children to be able not just to go to college, but to enter the workforce. And so with the addition of uh, new trades, the addition of new programs, building new buildings, really establishing itself in a very strong and broad way to bring uh, children into the school. I think that the um, focus really and the ability of the school to help a child to consider a variety of pathways towards adulthood, uh, to go uh, right into a trade, to go to a community college, to go to a college, um, uh, and to help parents to really uh, understand those kinds of choices for their children as well. So I think that that is a very strong position. Again, I think that we want to make sure that the academics hold up, that we want to make sure that the academics are strong, and again, model the strength of the academics, the strength of what the high school in Arlington offers, um, while at the same time recognizing that for many children, that next step, more and more, is a trade. And uh, I really appreciated uh, Dr. Berquillen's um, focus on that. And it, it did, I will say, it did help me as a parent get over what uh, I found to be a bias towards technical schools when my child applied there. I really went in with an open mind saying, you know, the technical school of 40 years ago is not the technical school, and really, for Minuteman, the science and technical school that they want to be. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Oh, don't tempt me. <laughs> I said, don't tempt me. <laughs> You'll go on. <laughs> uh, do you have any questions for us? Yeah, I guess that my one question, um, and uh, again, I, I think everybody will build on their own questions, but my one question really is, um, how uh, the Arl town of Arlington really sees the Minuteman uh, techni Regional Technical School fitting into the educational array for the children of Arlington. Any volunteers? Mr. Hurd. Is it a, having children in Arlington? Not, not quite at the minimum age, but I mean, I think it's invaluable. I grew up in Arlington. I, I toured Minuteman when I was in eighth grade. And um, I think back then, you, I, like you kind of said, it's a little different now than it was back then. And I don't want to say people sort of cast dispersion, but you were kind of pushed towards this college mm -hmm. path, trajectory path, and I ended up going to Arlington Catholic. But, um, you know, I, I look back, and for my boys, I think it really needs to be a viable option for kids to come up. And it's not just, oh, you have to go to Arlington High, then you have to go to Harvard. I think, you know, of the people I know that went to Minuteman, some of the most successful, both in life and professionally, mm -hmm. people that I know, I think it really is such a crucial option for kids. And I think to kind of preserve the identity of Minuteman as a trade school where someone can go and say, hey, just be an, be an electrician, be a plumber. And then you, you dip your toe in it, and you're like, wow, this is really fun, and I can make a, a good living doing that. I think that is really important and is definitely something that, as a parent of, you know, they're in the down right now, but as they grow up, it's something that we'll consider. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other responses to the board? I have visions of new growth in Arlington oh. that has competition for okay. Minuteman Tech in Arlington. Okay. That's how valuable I think yeah. institution like Minuteman Tech is because I see us really education evolving more towards what Minuteman Tech is mm -hmm. than to um, than ingraining itself more in what, what we the traditional form of, of high school education. Not that I mean, it's not bad. They're all good, you know mm -hmm. uh, uh, but, uh, but but certainly more options along those lines. Yeah, yeah. 
um, you know, having two children again, one of the things that I saw was that they were just so different. You know, once you have two, you realize I have nothing to do with you. But you know, you have the, you know, the two. My son was very intellectual. My daughter was very hands-on. Um, and looking back, I, I think she would have drowned at Arlington High School, whereas my son thrived, right? And so having those choices and really thinking about how, in this case, uh, the select board really thinks about those options and the value of those options really is something uh, that uh, hopefully any representative to the committee really brings. So. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So uh, we have Paula next. Is that, uh, Ashley, the Ms. 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 Paula Ms. Yeah. Dimitia. Yeah. Yeah. Paulo Dimitia. <laughs> Take a minute to. Uh, received over the years and <laughs> names and all these variations. Take a minute to settle in. Take your time. Um, I brought some just talking Turn. points just to reorganize my entire brain as a parent of three young children. <laughs> <laughs> Give me just a second. I want to get to your material so I'm not flipping through them like I did the first mm -hmm. time. There we go. All right. Whenever you're ready. All right. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm Paula. Uh, I've been a resident of Arlington for 16 years now. Uh, we moved here when I was eight months pregnant with my first, and we were looking at a town that would give the diversity of social, economic, educational, racial, cultural experiences that we were looking for for our family. And biased by my background in education and work first, I was looking at the stats. I was like, this is a fantastic school education system. Um, and I wasn't looking ahead, or that far ahead at that moment, <laughs> right? Um, but I knew Miniman uh, from my professional experience. I'd seen the growth from the work first development perspective um, of how it's transformed and how it's always been competing with other districts in the area. Because grants and programs and equipment tend to go to the tech areas that had more kids in the lower end of the income spectrum, right? So this kind of like, ah, these kids just go to college. Like, they don't need these grants, right? Um, and I've seen fantastic growth um, in the system. In as I'm the, as a freshman, I don't know, I'm being corrected, I'm supposed to be saying rising sophomore uh, <laughs> now. Um, this is my first experience with a high school system in here. So everything's new, everything's different. Um, and I didn't hesitate at all when my son's like, I want a tour minimum, I just want to do it. Um, we did, like Ann said, you know, you have to fight sometimes the stigma when people say, oh, it's going to AHF, like, no, it's going to minimum. I was like, oh. <laughs> right? People still believe that's the place where kids like, don't have another choice to go to. And I was like, oh. Right? This kids choose to go there, and I am so happy we have two really strong high schools that our kids could go to. Um, not for a second, I said, like, eh, no, maybe it's just go there and just take electives, right? Like, it was, I've seen the growth, I've seen the strength of the school, how it's more from a place with, like, a reputation or a different reputation to a place of excellence for the kids and for the adults. And again, I come from a different angle um, in terms of education and, and planning. Um, I started sitting in workforce development. Um, I've always been involved in workforce development and I, and I and education in my previous life many, many years ago as, as a teacher and as a department head. I have a different perspective also because I have young kids on the younger end. My youngest just finished kindergarten and I have an artisan and a high schooler. Um, so I've, I'm seeing everything fresh in a way. I don't have children that graduated that have sort of different options, right? Um, and just like I said, I, I think my daughter will be better suited for AHS based on her style. The little one, I think, going to be a future minimum auto mechanics junkie or something like that one day, but still time to go. Um, I, I've i served on boards. I, I, said, I lose track now. I think it's about two years ago that I finished my six-year tenure at AF, at the Wellington uh, Education Foundation, uh, which was a fantastic experience and a very different perspective also on what 
schools get to do and what they get to see and the investment in the powerful teachers that we have. Um, I've seen a similar kind of power from the teachers and the voices at Miniman, and I love that, and I love the fact that there's, they have capstone projects and research projects that they can collaborate through the different projects. And my kid came home saying, we're building a bad house for the environmental science kids. I'm like, okay. Um, there's a lot of that learning that happens without even them thinking that they're going, I love that kind of model. That's, to me, that's also the foundation of workforce development. Um, and it doesn't have to be the trades. It can be a stepping stone to something else. My brother is a graduate of a Vogue Tech. I have friends um, that took that Vogue Tech experience and have PhDs, right? And they continue their path, and some just stayed in the trades. Um, and I lost my track again. About 30 seconds. <laughs> um, and as a newbie, I think also I bring a lot of different perspectives and questions that sometimes you need just to shake things up a little bit and just try thinking things in a different, in a different way. Um, which is something you need sometimes in quasi-public and non-profit organizations. Just sometimes you just need to ask the question that is like, but why? Uh, why can't we just do it differently, more efficiently, better improved? Why? Um, I think my, probably my 30 seconds are up. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, can we just go in the same order? Sure. sure. This is Mahan. Um, my question sort of revolved around um, also educating the board as well as anybody at home, but also um, the little bit of due diligence that each member here has done. So if you were Arlington's representative to the Minuteman um, School Committee, how do you see yourself interfacing, um, educating, uh, advocating, uh, establishing that relationship with uh, Minuteman current and or future parents? Um, in, if you were in that role? I think what I've noticed as a first time, as a first year parent at Miniman, is, or maybe what I was expecting that just didn't quite happen was the level of communication you're used to getting from the younger grades, right? Um, then all of a sudden you get the message every week from the principal, superintendent update, and this update, and you know what's going on. You can, even if you're not one of those parents that are engaged, right? You, you know, you can read. I did not get that level of communication from Miniman. Um, I was like, well, maybe it's a high school thing, right? They're like, no, you're still the parent. You still want to know what's going on. Um, I've heard a lot of noise around that communication piece. And I think that the most, and I noticed from parents that are not even in Miniman, and they have younger kids because I have that advantage. It's like, oh, you're like high school, like what's going on there? I think there's a lot of misconceptions still around the school, a lot of, it, a lot of lack of information about what the school can offer. Um, there's a lot of confusion that we even have a Vogue Tech and the parents of the younger kids like, what? Um, and the idea that it's still a trades school and that pushes kids to the trades and if you're not trade oriented, that's not for you. So I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done around communication, not just about issues related to the school, but in general in terms of publicity and advertising and explaining and understanding, like for the kid, people that like stats, show the stats, just like I look in the DC website many, many years ago about all the stats for, AA, for Arlington systems. Um, a lot of people just respond well to that. I think there needs to be much better communication internally of what's going on. There are a lot of pressing issues for the next three years on the board uh, with the superintendent, with the leadership, with the principal, with the, all the rumors around the trades being taken off the, the table and all the stuff that needs to be kind of quiet it um, down and it, I don't think it will be easy, but I think there's a lot of communication and open conversations with uh, constituents. I've done that with AF, just sitting down and answering questions. Do we have any questions? Just answer the question. I can give you the information. Just go to the meetings and go to the schools. Um, I've done them through the PTO and, and even trying to explain what workforce development is <laughs> for other people in, in my professional life. Like, what is that? And there's a lot of just sit down, ask the question, I'll advocate, I may not have an answer, I may not be able to get an answer, but it's just ask and we can bring it because we're representing everybody, our present and future. Thank you. Ms. Hurd? Trying to mix up my question a little bit. <laughs> you sort of answered it, so I'll give you a chance to expand on it, but as a current Minuteman parent, are there any current practices at Minuteman that you feel are at risk 
at under the current leadership that as a board member you'd step in and say you know we you know I I've heard that you know the administration is going to move away from this practice or this style of teaching mm -hmm. or the, this method and you know I really think we need to preserve it because it's done well for my student and this is why um, is there anything that you can think of that would fall in that category the only things that I've heard as big flags were rumors um, so when my kid came to home one day it's like the superintendent is talking about getting rid of the trails. I'm like, wait a minute, like, what are you talking about? Where did you get that information? Who started that rumor? I haven't heard any information. And it's like, <clears throat> it's a book type. You can't just get rid of trails, right? Like, what are, what's going on? Um, I think the fact that the kids get rumors before the parents even get communicated of anything, it's a, it's a problem. In terms of the delivery of education, I've been super happy. Um, I, there's definitely a room for improvement. I would have liked to see maybe <clears throat> a stronger study plan for the majors, for example. This is what we're going to do. This is how we accomplish. This is how we integrate with academics. This is how we make them think. More clarity around that. I've asked that to the teacher. I'm like, what are they learning in carpentry? Like, what is it? Um, I think there should definitely be more improvement in that and also to demystify the traits um, in general. There's a lot of parents that I've talked to that don't even know their other majors outside of the trades. So they do a better job of that. Um, I would have liked to have more explanation around that as a parent. Um, and I think there is room for more options in terms of academics. There's always room for more. I'm happy with the options. The kid that wants to study more, there's more. They want to study just enough, there's just enough. But I think we could do more as economy changes and programs change and needs change. And there's nothing wrong with doing more tech and more education if that's the path that some kids want. And I, again, it's my first year. I've seen a lot of interdisciplinary projects, and I think that's foundational. They need to cross train. Well, my second question was going to be <laughs> are there any improvements that you could see? But you <laughs> jumped right into that, so thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you for, for putting your application in. A question on, on again, on my, my theme tonight is going to be communication, and it, it, I read your cover letter to us, and, and also as you look over the years, back in 2018, there were about 119 Arlington students at Minuteman. Uh, as of October 1st, 2022, there's 215. It's grown dramatically as, as, as there are more in-district students and more have come from Arlington. So with that, the need for, for more communication. But you had expressed um, concern about uh, like more communication from mm -hmm. the administration, perhaps from the school committee representative. What type of things would you do if you were the representative to reach out to, to families or, or to encourage the administration to provide more communication um, in, in your role as a school committee member? I think for families, a good place to start is attending the PTA meetings, even though normally in, after elementary school, there's only like the same 10 parents that show up to every PTA meeting, right? Um, and not everybody reads the emails. Um, I, there's no specific email that comes from the PTA, for example, informing things. So maybe having some sort of newsletter that, like that and that's one way of reaching parents. Um, I found coffee meetings or things like that tend to work for some parents. Um, I run a support, kind of support group at, at the Audison and it's kind of like that. It's like, I'm going to be here. They say, do you have any questions? Like, you can't do a WhatsApp group for everybody, right? Like, so still reaching like that, um, participating in attending meetings at the different schools so you can just inform parents of what's going on. Um, I've enjoyed at the PTO level having the representative from a Arlington Public Schools coming and say about what's going on, right? Um, and I think that's an important first step to communicate. And I think mm -hmm. the school should probably have a few more newsletters or mailers or something that comes to the schools, to the families about what's going on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks for applying uh, for the position. So I'm going to ask you some other question to, mm -hmm. to the, the one that I asked before, and that is I mean, to the extent you are aware of the dynamics on the board. I mean, some that have been around for a long time, and also, I mean, I mean Arlington will have a, a high um, voting weight. You know, 
what do you think? What's your assessment of the dynamics, and how do you f see your leadership style fitting into that? My limited <laughs> one-year tenure knowledge is that it's a lot of people with a lot of experience and a lot of history with the system. I think what's lacking is the new factor, somebody to come and challenge ideas. Um, from my experience at AEF, it was also three-year terms, and new for taste. So every year there's a new board member, a new president, a new something, and that forces you to like really reassess leadership styles and see what's better for working here, for better for working there, then maybe you can do this kind of work in subcommittees. Um, it's, it's very unproductive sometimes when you have a bunch of people that are set in their ways and that happens all the time, every day, the same way. And sometimes you need that squeaky wheel, again, to come in and just challenge. And maybe you continue, right? But at least it forces you to stop and think. Um, so I think that is something that's missing, probably, from that interaction. Um, but what's missing is also current families. So we have a very different perspective once you're embedded in the system than when you're completely outside. And there are pros and cons for both, right? Like there's, like there's no right or wrong. Um, but that kind of diversity uh, will be helpful. Um, and there was another one that I just thought and I blanked. Um, Don't worry. Okay, about okay. <laughs> if it comes back to you, that's right. It happens oh, to me um, all the time. I'm also not, like, I've handled multiple projects uh, with multiple stakeholders, different states, um, and I'm a non confrontational person. I just like to come and sit down and listen. And there's always somebody you learn from, right? And so you listen, you observe, and then you can start challenging. And sometimes you need to act sooner, or sometimes you need to act later. But I'm much more of the, let's just reconcile, mediate, challenge but also listen and respect the opinions of others and where they're coming from. And then, like, you're not going to find me like shouting and, and doing like a rocket anywhere. So. Thank you. Much more. Thanks. Much Appreciate your time. Time. Almost done. Thank you. Um, I think I'll ask the same question that I did before, which is how would you think about representing the town of Arlington's interests and your thoughts about that? And that could be our you know, financial picture. It could be the educational mission. Um, and you know maybe how you would approach trying to represent the town's interest. I think that you have a very you've articulated a really good way of of how you would communicate with parents, and that's extremely extremely important. But your, your thoughts on how you would represent um, the town leadership, you know, and and trying to um, represent our priorities as well um, as as the people who appoint this position. I, th I think there's. There's always some fine line that you have to, <laughs> to walk between representing your interests, interest in somebody else, and the town and the budgets. Um, I think that if the school committee at Miniman is supported by the equivalent school committee in general APS and by the town, the town is placing value on the school system. And I know our school is much more expensive for students than Arlington High School. I've been asked by other parents, oh, why? And I'm like, well, we have all this technology. And so it feels like there's a need to always justify why Minuteman is worth it, why Minuteman is important, why do we have a higher um, student cost. Um, so I, I think as long as there's an understanding of the value of the, 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 the institution and how that represents the needs of the families and the students here, I think it will be pretty smooth sail, and I have complete confidence that Minimum will continue to grow and thrive and not pull out of, of the district. Um, as long as, again, there's, there's a, a, a united message from, from the town saying, yes, we value, we respect it, we understand the pros and the cons, and, but this is a really good option for our kids. It's different and equally good. Great, thank you. And I think my other question from before you answered with, um, with some of my other colleagues, uh, do you have a question for us, though? That was one of those questions, in a way, like yeah. what I just answered, yep. mm -hmm. like what value is placed and how is minimum spoken of at the town level in terms of the importance and the justification for budgets and, and decisions. Yeah, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you for the question. And I had a, I had a unique experience with Minuteman over the years because when I was on the finance committee, I was, Minuteman was my subcommittee. So every year 
between like 2009, 2019, I would go out and visit with Dr. Bill and Mr. Mahoney, who's back now, uh, was, was also there. Um, and, and it was, one of my tasks was to recommend the Minuteman budget to, to the Finance Committee, and, and, and I took great pride in that, but also saw the pride that the students took in their school because as part of my visit every year, I would get a tour of, and it was the old school at the time. I've, I've seen the, the new school. But it, it, it really you know, made me proud leaving, and, and I have always said Arlington has two public high schools, Arlington High School and Minuteman. And, and I think over the years that that has been the position of the town. Now, you go back a long way, and I'm going back to the early 2000s and 90s, there were some rough years, and that was a different situation because there was school choice and because there was different costs involved. But I, I would say it, as we look at this town, um, the town supported the debt exclusion for Minuteman overwhelmingly. And in all my years um, throughout the time that working with Dr. Boquillen and, and three different school committee representatives, Laura Marset and Sue Scheffler, um, Paul Schlickman was a, 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 as a member, but my, my last few years it was, it was Laura and, and, and Sue. Um, there was great pride that the town took in Minuteman and, and we're all pleased to see the new school and, and, and see the vision of, of the numbers coming back up with the new school. And you think, would we like to see Minuteman add a couple more member towns? Absolutely, if, if there's room there. But, but in terms of Arlington, encouraging Arlington students who want to choose Minuteman, all for it and, and fully supportive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. And um, Ms. Marr, our next person is? Michael Ruderman. Mr. Ruderman. A minute, Michael, and we will uh, get our papers in order here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was going to say, please give me time to find, oh, yeah, me, but you uh, have yeah, been doing that. Thank you. <laughs> Plus, it'd be deafening on ACMI. Yeah. Oh, always. I know. I didn't think of that. I have I'm not muted. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, <laughs> members of the select board and members of the Arlington community tuning in on ACMI are present here tonight. My name is Michael Ruderman, a town meeting member from Precinct 9 and Arlington's representative to the Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical High School Committee. I'm requesting reappointment to a second three-year term. Tonight is actually my third time in applying for this volunteer position. The only reason that someone would want to serve, uh, I think it's We've clocked like 75 to 80 meetings over the last three years, both, both school committees, you know, subcommittees, negotiation sessions, that you have to believe in Minuteman. You have to believe in what Minuteman distinguishes itself in, what's unique about it. And that's the method and the ways of the teaching and learning that go on there. And that's why I'm asking you for this reappointment, because that's what I so firmly believe in. I've been a Minuteman volunteer for over 10 years, starting back uh, in two 2012 when my daughter uh, first entered. She was Minuteman class of 2016 and then the University of Alabama class of 2020. Uh, my initial interests in Minuteman were curriculum focused, particularly in the engineering and robotic shops where I served on the departmental advisory board. Uh, the work dovetailed very nicely with my professional work at the state's Department of Transportation in examining how Minuteman prepared uh, future engineers of all disciplines uh, for further education and whether they were qualified to continue that uh, training in college. We did a lot of work, especially in the mathematics curriculum those first few years, in examining what our kids came out prepared with versus what, what uh, colleges and universities in the area were looking for them to have. Um, I served after that in the General Advisory Board. Uh, one of the goals of that was to look at uh, the general job situation and look ahead years, try to figure out what is going to be, what are going to be the needs of the particular 21st century employment picture in our area years out. And that's why years ago we instituted a veterinary science program that we're getting up to speed now. If anybody knows a, a retired vet with a state teacher's license that wants to come in and consult on that, we'd love to find out because we're, uh, we're competing in a very hot market for talent there, which is why we're teaching these kids how to go into it themselves. 
Every shop at Minuteman prepares kids to enter the workplace at some level. And just to take this veterinary shop as one, some of these kids are going to graduate a couple of years from now. Juniors are, are the top class for, that have gone through the program so far. Some of them are going to go into vet, veterinary assisting and vet teching. Some of, them going, some of them are going to go on to um, biology, either a two-year or four-year degree. Some of them are going to go on to medicine. And they're going to find jobs, if this is their passion, they're going to find jobs in it at all level. And that's what Minuteman trains kids to do. Look ahead, find your place in the world, be prepared for it. I was instrumental in the town election campaigns, a couple of them, in 2016, to secure the financing for the new school building, which opened in 2019. We promised the, the taxpaying public that we would fill that building because we, we would give the school faculty a building that was commensurate with their level of instruction and their dedication. And we were right. Applications from in-district students have now reached a 50-year high. Coming out of COVID's disruptions to teaching, we safely restored in-person learning within our academy model of cooperative instruction. That was one of the reasons why I and the other school committee members voted to, to keep on our retiring former superintendent, Dr. Bequillen, for a year uh, to maintain the leadership through that transition. Something else I'm proud of having accomplished during my uh, first term as a school committee member is having successfully negotiated a new collective bargaining agreement with our faculty. I'm uh, probably the uh, only person who was at that table through our negotiations who had sat both on management and the labor side. I'm an elected representative uh, of, of my local in SEIU, so I had that perspective of we're in this together, let's achieve something that we can all agree upon at the end. It shouldn't have to be confrontational, and it wasn't. I've also been a large part of Minuteman's preparations to town meeting. That's part of the experience that I bring to the, to the school committee. 23 years in town meeting have given me a really good sense of what town meeting members are looking for in a budget presentation, the information, the clarity, the legibility, and we're both proud of having our budgets passed by all nine towns for the years that I've been a school committee member, and we're also grateful because we understand that this is a second high school for all of these towns. We, and we, we're very we, grateful for the support. Thank you. We've reached five minutes. One more minute. Uh, we, I've given everybody else just the five minutes, so but you'll have okay. a chance to answer questions. I'll pause it there and take questions. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. I'm going to okay. attempt to ask the same question of everybody, but you um, do have the experience, so I can mm -hmm. sort of add to it a little bit more. So it, uh, it, it's sort of a two-part question. Uh, the first one was uh, you mentioned about Superintendent McQuellen and uh, successfully negotiating for him to stay on for a year. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that that contract was terminated um, and he's not serving in that capacity. If I'm incorrect on that, if you could tell me that, and if I am correct on that, what would you do as a, the Arlington representative to, I, I think that <coughs> uh, one year from uh, Dr. Bequellen is was a very smart, uh, idea and pathway to take. So. Right, he was ready to retire. Um, we asked him to stay on for one more year as full-time acting superintendent to manage the transition. Um, he served as a consultant in a limited capacity after that, after which time we were up and running with uh, the next management team and um, we were grateful to have had his assistance to get us there. I don't think there was anything terminated. I think we simply you got to the point where we wanted to uh, in the in the period shortly following his, his retirement from full-time uh, superintendency. So he stayed on while Superintendent Dawson was on? He was available to us uh, to consult with for a brief period, yes. Okay. Well, I'm just I'm <laughs> hearing a different story. I think he's a, a, a great resource, and, you know, as you transition to the next. He is, um, as, as you as mentioned well to as Mr. DeCourcy, uh, sure. you know, the um, former business manager, uh, Kevin Mahoney, who is our interim superintendent. Right, president. but it's my time right now. That wasn't my question. Um, the question I uh, ask people who are applying for this the first time, I'd, I'd tailor it to you in, sense, in the tr sense of communication um, with the parents, advocating for the parents. I know you mentioned the unions, but I've also watched the Lex Media um, replays of the meetings 
and heard from the teacher union president. So um, and it, it's come at least to my attention that especially in uh, the most recent issue <coughs> that Minuteman parents have said that they didn't find a willingness from you to listen to them and or uh, provide any explanation to them beyond I stand by the current superintendent. It is what it is. I have nothing more to say. So um, how would you address that? And again, if I'm totally incorrect, sometimes perception is the truth. I've dealt with that in politics myself. Sure. You know, that's what myself and my colleagues, mm -hmm. I, I won't speak for them. So um, communication with the parents, um, how would you change your style? Because I know you are someone who likes to advocate and educate, uh, especially around Minuteman. But how, moving forward, how would you, what would you say to those parents? Uh, hindsight is perfect. And we had some bad advice from our legal counsel saying, well, if the superintendent has decided not to renew the, the principal's contract, it's a personnel issue and you can't talk about it. That's on us because we believe that advice. It was bad advice and we shouldn't have. Our mistake was not in getting out there and saying, look, for the reasons that the superintendent has expressed to the school committee in closed executive session, which the school committee heard, li listened to, and unanimously agreed were good and sufficient reasons for not renewing this person's contract, that's why we stand behind the superintendent. She's entitled to have the leadership team of her choice. This was all done above board. It was a surprise. Admittedly, it was a surprise to a lot of the kids and a lot of the faculty members, and we didn't come out in front of that and say why we thought that the necessary disruption to things the way they had been was worth it. And we were hampered by uh, the fact that it was not a pleasant severance of employment and stories and rumors and mistruths went out faster than we could get our boots on and chase them down. Hindsight tells us that the next time we've got to be more forward in expressing ourselves even within the constraints of talking about a personnel matter. If I'm asking you trust us, we have to give you a better reason for trusting us sooner and in more detail. Thank you. Thank you. Or stay within my lane. Um, so I guess similar to your question I asked before, but you as, as a representative of, of, the, of a current representative of the school committee, I mean, we all hear rumors about things, and maybe you could just, I'm not saying it to address rumors, but to say, for, to me, I think it's amazing that Minimum has expanded its curriculum to include sciences and the new technologies that weren't around 25 years ago when when I was looking at the school but the trades such as electrical plumbing mm -hmm. that's like the heart and soul landscaping of Minuteman I mean, my wife's a hairstylist mm -hmm. in beauty school um, those are the things that a lot of her co-workers of some of the people that I know that went to Minuteman that loved it there um, and as a school committee member whether or not this is being discussed, would you commit to defending and ensuring that those remain the heart and soul of the Minuteman trade curriculum and stay in place even as we add additional trades to the curriculum? I can say yes unequivoc unequivocally to that. First of all, it's part of our culture. Yep. The kids talk about their concentration or their major course of studies as their shop because we are rooted in the classic trades hall shops. We're going to continue to put the resources, expensive resources, into automotive repair and uh, the landscaping equipment that we're training kids on. These are big, expensive pieces of equipment. You know, the most expensive thing that my high school ever put in front of me was a calculus textbook and a French four you know, lesson book. The things that we need to buy, the microscopes, the the, you know, the, 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 
the uh, integrated circuit uh, components, the robotic sets. These are expensive, but we continue to provide them. We continue to ask you to provide them because this is what trains those kids in all of the, tra the traditional shops to where the state of the art is today. I mean, you know, if you're going to be a, in, in, uh, an auto technician today, you are one half working with tools, tools and turning wrenches, one half computer programming. And we're trying to prepare kids for the full expanse of this, as well as the kids who are someday maybe going to go into cosmetology or going to go into plumbing or going to go into electrical and be the and son or and daughter on that truck that rides around town. They're going to need to know how to take over that business. They're going to need to have the math skills and the budgeting skills and the business skills that someday when it's not ampersand kid, it's just that kid running the family business, maybe the second, maybe the third or fourth generation. We want those kids to be prepared for where their future takes them to in the trades. No, we are never leaving our, our core trades. Thank you. And I guess similar to what I had asked before, are there any improvements that you've advocated for in the last three years that haven't been put in place yet? Or are there any issues that have really been you know, your key focus as a current school committee member that you'd like to have more time to work on that you think you could accomplish for the school? The top rung of the ladder of a number of uh, curricula in, in a high school, in a comprehensive high school, are hardest to achieve for a high school whose mission is to devote half time to classroom work half time to putting that classroom work into practice. We need to do better by our students that want third and fourth years of things, even while learning to do something from a hands-on perspective and into a hands-on perspective, whether it's going into classical academics, whether it's going into you know, the traditional shops, whether it's going into part of the t new 21st century uh, economy and workplace, it, it's, a, it's a battle. Uh, giving kids the top level math, the top level instruction, finding the time in the day when we're already committed to giving the practice of putting skills into work, 50% in and 50% out. Um, so I hope to be able to work with that. It's something that the school committee is a little bit arm's length at because we advise and recommend these things to the superintendent. Superintendent hires the faculty. We can, we can consent, we can, we can give guidance, we can express our opinions, and I hope that we will continue to look at the, the, the career paths of the kids who need more than, say, a second year of language, which is really hard to provide, you know, given the time that we spend in the day. So that's something that I'm going to stay focused on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Rubin, um, to, to, for, for your reapplication and for, mm -hmm. for the work that you've done over the years, at, um, beginning back with the robotics at, at advisory back in 2013. <coughs> the question I have from, and then this comes from your cover letter again, where you recognized the need for searches for potential openings in leadership, mm -hmm. but a pledge that you made to um, move the process forward and, and communicate every step of the way with the people of Arlington and, and with residents. I just lost my spot here, so I just need to, um, is, is your community, well, your commitment or your recognition of the need to move forward with communication to us as a board and to the people of Arlington every step of the way? What are the, what are the type of things where you, are you thinking about or would well, you do sure. um, when, when you wrote that? Sure, here's where we are now. Um, we are investigating, having hired a professional investigator and turned over the matter to her to look into an allegation of improper conduct on the part of uh, Dr. Dawson while well, she was full-time superintendent. She is now on leave. We hope to have this report back before the end of June, at which time the school committee members will see the details and we'll have to come to a decision on her future with Minuteman within the bounds of what we are legally allowed to discuss with the public, we have got to do a thorough and comprehensive job of keeping the public informed as to what decision we're making and why we're making it. Along with that, the interim superintendent, uh, Mr. Mahoney, 
is progressing in hiring an administrative team. We hope to have those names uh, signed up and ready for uh, publication again in July. After that, there will be a search for a full-time principal. We communicate these things better to our Minuteman family for the simple reasons of how schools communicate with, with students all the time. There are emails, there are flyers, there's the calendar, there's the portal to look things up on. We have not done as good a job in recognizing that you, the representatives of this town and the rest of the townspeople are also a constituency. We've been lax in the time we've spent on getting the message out to you. It's a challenge. There's no hometown newspaper that covers all nine towns in our district. There's no way that we can mass inform the entire populace the same way as putting in an article in the hometown weekly. Um, Frankly, a lot of news organizations don't want to run something that only applies to 14 kids out of, out of nine towns with I don't know how many hundred thousand uh, of population. That's why you probably haven't heard about uh, the couple dozen kids that we've sent off again to this national conference and contest that's held every summer uh, called Skills USA. It's sort of like the Olympics of, of um, vocational technical education where kids bring their projects, they compete in challenges, and they're awarded medals at the national level. And Minuteman again has sent a very strong contingent there of, who've won their golds and silvers at state, and they're going off to the nationals. But if you don't happen to be the parent of one, or if you don't happen to, you know, be... be like them on Facebook. <laughs> I know all about that. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> this, this is a crowning achievement for these kids, and I wish it got more coverage outside the walls of the school. If, if I could, of and course, you're on please. one of your subcommittees is the Finance Subcommittee. That's right. At, at Minuteman, and, and one of the things that Dr. Bill Quillen had talked about um, as he discussed the new building was the need to um, try to find additional towns to, to join the district or, or to find communities that are willing to make capital payments, because as you know, That's right. um, while the per pupil cost has gone down with, with the uh, student population rising, um, you know, one of the things that we're grappling with as a town is that we're gonna go out for an override later this year, and, and Minuteman, while it's been a huge success, the past few years we've seen double digit increases in our assessments, which is what's left at, at the end of the day, right? You, you right. have your revenue, you take out your expenses, and what's left gets spread among the communities, what is your position on, as, as a school committee member, um, you know, advocating for an increase in, or, or trying to, to um, rec not recruit, but, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, draw more interest for member towns as you try to increase your population and, and also seek capital contributions from those dwindling numbers numbers of non-member communities that are sending students there. Right, having another town or two or four, whatever, uh, in the district uh, where we used to have 16 and, and now have nine uh, would certainly spread the standing costs, uh, you know, the fixed investment that has to be made every year amongst a greater base. So we've begun looking at it. At a uh, meeting we had a couple of months ago, we brought in representatives of uh, several uh, we invited someone from each of the towns uh, to come in and we just sort of you know, threw the idea out there. What do you think of us responding to this town's petition or another town? We have two solid contenders right now who've done all the paperwork that they need to do to say we are interested in joining. And they considered it and the ramification that we all came back to is that without a brick and mortar solution right now to increase the number of chairs, adding another town to the Minuteman School District means that the number of places that we allocate to each of the existing nine towns would have to be reduced. And the message came back strong and clear, not, we're, we're not having that. In fact, the one time that I really had to bang the table or twist arms, whatever analogy you want with my other school committee members was a couple of admissions seasons ago. The first time in the school's history where we topped out the class within district applicants. We simply had no room 
for anybody from outside the district, which, which you know from your experience is, is an astounding thing historically. But it also meant that a number of kids that we had told, sure, go ahead, apply. If you're qualified, you'll get in. It also meant that at first look, we couldn't take all those kids. There was a contingent of, I think, uh, 17 or 18 um, Arlington 8th graders uh, who met all the requirements, uh, submitted everything that we needed in the applications, and yet it looked like we weren't going to have room for them. And I said to my other school committee members, but we promised. We made a deal. And we're asking these, these kids, their families, and their neighbors' families for an awful lot of money to run this place. We have got to find a way to break the bounds for one class year at least until we can come up with a better communicated and fully reasoned uh, policy, which we now have, to what do we do when our applications just blow the doors out and we don't have room for everybody? So we figured that out. But for one year, we went from like 175 kids uh, in the entering class to 199. It's going to be this, you know, this lump in the snake that continues to move through, through the class years. But I said we had to do it. We had to find a way to do it because we had promised these kids that if they qualified, they'd be admitted before we had ever considered the situation of not having enough room for every qualified in-district applicant. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gould. Mr. Diggins? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rudiman, for applying again. I mean, mm -hmm. You probably know the question I'm going to ask. <laughs> I tried to come up with a question that I could ask everyone. I mean, yours just requires a little bit of tweaking because you are I mean, part of the dynamic. I mean, but but, um, but, but how, how, how does uh, the school committee you know, work together? And, uh, how do you feel it works together? And what, what is, is as, as a team of nine, I think we work together exceptionally well. I've learned in the last three years um, many of the particular talents that my colleagues brought to the job or bring to the job every day. Um, our, our rep from Dover is an insurance executive and business owner who's as good an engineer and project manager as anybody with a hard hat in the back of his pickup truck. Um, our chair is, is an expert at um, making sure that all are heard in our meetings in the room and outside of the room. Um, you know, other skills, uh, our, our, our Concord rep is a 40-something year retired town manager of several different towns in our area. Who could you ask for better advice in negotiating a contract with, with municipal employees? I think the part that I bring, I've mentioned before, is that uh, the feeling of a town meeting member sitting way back in those seats and looking at the slides going up on the screen and wanting to know, what does this mean? What is this going to cost? Why is it important to me? Why should we vote on this? And I think our budget presentations have really come up uh, a level uh, since I've been there because I've asked the superintendent and the finance and, and the administrative people, you've got to explain this more. You've got to provide more substantiation. It's got to be easier to read from 75 feet away. Little things like that. But if you don't want to lose an audience that you're counting on for a positive vote on your budget, these are the things that can turn it. So I think I've helped our school committee in particular address our political impression uh, when we go to town meeting. And I hope that I can bring them the experiences that I've had in this year of realizing that along with DESE, the Department of uh, Elementary and Secondary Education, and the Mass Association of School Committees, and all these other constituencies that we, that we correspond with and have to answer to, that the folks in the towns that don't send us their kids, but you know, just just pay our bills, they are an important constituency too. And we need to give them more along the way of what it is we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Rubin, for your uh, service to Arlington through this and, and other, um, many other ways. I think I'll ask you the same question. Um, representing the needs of the students, and particularly Arlington students, are very important. How, what do you view as a responsibility of the Minutemen school representative um, to represent the town's interests? Certainly, if there's an issue that impacts Arlington in particular, such as the, um, you know, figuring out how to live in a new environment of 
having more qualified kids than we can possibly take in each year. That hits Arlington first because Arlington, for as long as I've known Minuteman through all my years in town meeting, um, Arlington has always topped the attendance rolls. So any effort to expand the capacity of, of the school or to bring in new towns uh, has to start with a consideration of what this means for the towns that are carrying, carrying the largest freight, Lexington, Lancaster, and Arlington. And, you know, any two of us plus one more town represents more than 50% of the way to vote in the school committee. Um, aside from that, issues particular to Arlington, I think as the new Arlington comprehensive high school is built here, we have to continue to make our case that Minuteman, even while teaching many of the same things, is the rightest fit for some of Arlington's kids, the best fit. Because it's not just subject matter, it's the way it's taught and it's the way it's learned. And even in a gorgeous new building that is going to be the pride of the town for decades to come, Minuteman still fulfills a role in how we teach, and how we learn, and how we put that into practice. Thank you. Um, I think I will ask one other question that is, is necessarily specific because you're the, uh, the currently serving member. I think one of the, uh, the most rewarding and also the most challenging aspects of, of this kind of representation for any uh, official is the opportunity to interface with the public, with the constituencies. And uh, I, I'm curious how you feel about your experiences talking with Minuteman parents over the last three years, how you evaluate your own um, work in that regard, if you have any thoughts about, you know, if you're satisfied with that or if there's things that you would do differently. Well, I enjoy it, um, especially when somebody calls me up uh, or, or emails or something with, you know, the specific question or I don't understand this or that. I've always taken the time to answer a particular request for information. If someone wants to write and say, I don't like such and such, well, can I get back to this person and um, give that person what they need to know to either look at the full picture or, or uh, you know, consider, consider the, uh, the extent of what's going on? Um, it's been busy. You know, my name and my phone number have been out there for a lot of years. People know how to reach me, and they do. Um, and I enjoy it. I enjoy these contacts because... Um, I continue to make the case for Minuteman, but I think the parents who have contacted me always end up making the case better. Uh, unless there is a particular hot spot of a problem that they need help with, they're usually full of the kind of praise that I wish we could, you know, you know, write in billboards and put on the front of the building and say, this is why Bennett Man exists. This is a kid who didn't find her place before and now has. This is a, this is a kid who didn't have uh, any idea about the direction that he wanted to go to. He found a teacher and a way of learning that did change, you know, just turn their future around. And this is what I get from the parents, and this is really what sustains any of us in, in the, you know, public service, the stories, the stories that we come by almost anecdotally where somebody says, yeah, yeah, it worked. I love hearing that. Thank you. Uh, do you have any, a question for us? Just one. Um, have you seen the new building? Have you had a chance to walk through? I think I invited everybody who was in office uh, two and a half years ago. Um, a couple people took me up. Um, I'd love to give you a tour of the new place where you can see what it is uh, we're talking about, what people are raving about, and what... 7th uh, and 8th graders are looking forward to with an awful lot of enthusiasm. Like I said, blowing the doors off as far as the admissions go. I'd love to give you a tour uh, and show you what's going on there. And outside the building, the athletic fields that we built as part of our commitment to making a Minuteman High School education as full and as comprehensive as any in-town public high school education. All the sports teams that are available to these kids. It's part of a well-rounded education. I'd love to show you. Thank you. Do you mean do, do a little zoom, fly through and, and around and narrate it? <laughs> and I can watch it on video lots of times. I'm, I'm serious because it's right. generally how I take in information. I mean, it's a little hard for me to get there, you know, but I'd love, I'd love for sure. that to happen. So, so yeah, cool. Thanks. Thank sure. you. Don't on fall homecoming when every single athletic field is busy from corner to corner. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Ruderman. My pleasure. Next up. Janet Marston. Janet Marston. 
Once again, give us a settle in while we settle in with our papers. Shuffling shall commence. <laughs> So this is, I, hi, I'm Janet Marsden, lifelong um, resident here in Arlington, um, and um, I'm parent of an rising junior, also in the environmental shop, which is a tremendous um, opportunity, and lots of Arlington um, students tend to be attracted to. So um, I first put in for the select seat. Um, as a parent, passionate parent, um, that had a lot of little aha moments over the last year um, with the transition of new administration at, at Minuteman, um, which did not encompass the, um, my freshman year's experience. And in all honesty, growing up in Arlington, I never gave Minuteman a second thought until um, my son was in eighth grade and really got a, a different perspective of the learning um, modules that are the, that Minuteman creates itself, let alone the size. I really feel that, you know, Minuteman having a class of 200, if he had gone to AHS, he would have been lost. And the outcome for him would have been drastically different, my fear is apparent. Um, so I wanted to put in different lens, different times, different perspective. As I sit here with my career, very long career, in state government um, as a hiring manager, and I thought I would have different perspectives, and as a social worker, I listen to the, 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 the candidates tonight, and I also know that I'm woefully not qualified for this. Um, so I, I think at this point, with that said, I don't want to I, I want you guys to have the best of the best to choose from. So I'm going to just slide back into my seat and continue to listen and advocate. And maybe you'll find me in a different venue some other time. Thank you. Thank you. Let, before you before you go, I just want to I want to thank you for I just looked at your resume mm -hmm. and the work that you do for the state is amazing and it matters. Thank you. What thank a career! You. What a career! Um, and, and thank you for your um, your honesty as well, um, and your reflection, um, and your willingness to serve. Oh, so thank, thank you, you for being here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you, Mr. Chair, Ms. Miles. I, I, I want to say the same thing. And, and um, looking at, at your career experience and the, and the important work that you've done um, for the Department of Mental Health and. and safe haven programs and homeless outreach is, is very impressive. But the other thing I also want to acknowledge is your enthusiasm for the school because you close your letter by saying go Revs. And, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I really noticed that. So, so thank you and thank you for your candor uh, tonight as well. All right, finally we have Sarah Monique. I didn't need help with that one. <laughs> That's why he's the chairman. I see how quick he. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> where we're definitely from. All right. Well, while you're shuffling and getting the papers, yeah, right. I, um, Mr. Chairman and and the board, I want to acknowledge how clear the communication and the process around this application and candidacy process has been, and I really appreciate it. Um, I know that when we met with you last, you said, you know, this is a new new process for us and we're figuring it out and we ex we appreciated your candor then and we appreciated how you figured it out so thank you thank you Go right ahead. so my name is Sarah Montague and what I'd like to do in this time together is tell you three things what my motivation is and my interest for the role a little bit about my background and why I think a change in the representative from the town of Arlington is essential at this juncture so I'll start with my motivation um, I have a passion for education. It's just sort of part of my DNA. I come from a family of educators. My son came home from middle school and was effusive in talking about Minuteman. And I hadn't seen that level of passion about education since he was in preschool. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I were thought, oh my word, this place must be amazing. 
And he started to tell us about what he's looking forward to learning about. And he articulated what the process would be for freshmen coming in, that you would get to rotate through some of the majors, some of the shops. And it was that level of excitement, again, that spark. It wasn't his parents telling him what to do. He had this passion. And so we were in complete support. And when I got to the school, when he got to the school, I was working full time as I am now. I moved my schedule around so that I could join the Minuteman Parent Association. I was so passionate about the school, so passionate about figuring out a way that more parents from nine towns could connect, and really felt a passion for supporting the teachers. The teachers there are extraordinary. They are extraordinary, and they've been under tremendous stress over this last year, and that, that stress needs to be taken around. And with, with Kevin at the helm now, I'm, I know that the teachers are feeling in a better place. So my, my son was very engaged. He, he just graduated on June 2nd. He's on a track eventually to become a paramedic. So he'll be taking the EMT test. So he's studying for that. It's a, Congratulations. It's a tough, it's a tough exam. It's a tough exam. Mm -hmm. um, so for, for me, I've always put the interests of the organization ahead of my own personal interests. My own background, I have a 25-year career in marketing, customer experience, product innovation. It's been in a variety of industries and businesses, large and small. I also worked in nonprofit when I worked at WGBH. So I understand the nonprofit world as well. I've worked across a variety of industries, a variety of types of people. I'm known to be a collaborator and a communicator and someone that builds bridges and, and can get consensus going. I'm also um, trained in uh, change management through ProSci. I'm also a trained facilitator, so I have the business acumen and the training to come in. I may not have the education, the, the background in an industry of education. I did work at Bright Horizons Early Education for many years. Um, Janet, I think you were well qualified for this role, by the way. Your passion alone and your experience and how you fix things, you would have been wonderful. Um, so that's a little bit about my background. I would like to just talk a little bit about why I think change of representative is essential at this juncture. So as parents, we experienced the stress that our students and our teachers were going through. And we mobilized for, cha for, for, for questioning and understanding what was going on. And as you know, we weren't satisfied with the answers that we were given. The school is a gem. The school needs to continue to be a gem. It's time for change in the school committee group. There are parents like us in other towns advocating for change. Lexington had its meeting tonight. We don't know the results of what, what's happening. But it's time for change. We want to um, shore up the administration. We want to re-energize the teachers and give them confidence that the school is a gem. We want to give confidence to incoming parents who have been barraged by all of the PR around this. But most importantly, we want the students that are there to understand that they made a great choice and that we are all behind them. Collectively, we are all behind them. And I'll take your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think our order's working, so let's yeah, stick with it. Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Thank you. Um, trying to stick to the same fr framework of, of the question, um, and I have heard from lots of parents, um, and I've done as much as I can to educate myself sort of in my mm -hmm. select board role, but um, if you were Arlington's re representative, if you could just give us a sense of, you know, what your style is, how you would avail yourself um, for parents for an opportunity whether it's to ask a question and, and, and get educated, whether it's something that they need you to advocate for them for, um, or whether it's just getting out, either creating, correcting disinformation and or getting information out. So, you know, how would you be accessible? How would you serve in that role? Yeah, sure. It's, it's a great question because there's always opportunities to improve communication. So there's a couple things that I would do. Um, I, I think that there needs to be a little bit more um, concerted and co coordinated communication between the school committee, the school, and the parent association. So it's very confusing to parents 
when different communique comes out from different sources. And what the school did have at one point in time with the, uh, when Dan O'Brien, who was the director of public relations, was at the helm, um, was a coordinated newsletter from the desk of the principal on what was going on. And there was also opportunity to include things that were going on with the parent association or other key meetings that were coming up. So it wasn't just relegated to a calendar of activities on the website, but you could get a sense at a glance of the cool projects that were going on in the school, when the skills team was competing, and all of those types of things. Well, Dan left as a result of, of these changes, and so that's an opportunity to shore that up. So I would say when you have that coordinated set of tools, you think about where else can those tools live to inform the rest of the constituents that may care about those topics. So I could see a way that that newsletter, that communique, is made available um, on the Arlington Town website. I would make myself available for office hours or if people, I'm big about meeting in person now that people are more comfortable. Um, so I would, I would make myself available and I, I would encourage all of the school committee representatives to do the same so that we look like we're operating in concert. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Thank you. Thank you for your interest in your passion um, and certainly being a recent Minuteman parent with you know, experience, uh, four years of experience with the school is important. Um, I guess keeping it sort of curriculum based, mm -hmm. um, is there any, in the four years that you've seen, has there any been has there any specific changes to the curriculum that you thought have been improvements to the school? And conversely, is there any changes that you've seen that has actually been implemented with the curriculum that you thought were incorrect and that you'd like to sort of undo if you were the school committee member? Okay. So I think that there was an absolute need for the vet tech program. Um, when you look at the data behind um, how many people adopted pets during the pandemic, the veterinary uh, services, yep, veterinary services out there are in desperate need for vet techs. They can't find them fast enough now. So we have the, uh, the school has the opportunity to create a program to create trained students to meet a demand in the marketplace. So these students could go out and get jobs ASAP. They could probably get jobs their junior year working full time over the summertime. What I did observe about that program was that it, um, there was a relationship with a veterinary program um, and the program was uh, put on the back burner for a while and it was frustrating for parents whose students had come in to, to participate in this program and the path forward wasn't clear. And so um, it was uh, Dr. Dawson who was involved in sort of stalling that when there had been a plan in place for that pr program to get off the ground and continue. So I think that that's one big hiccup. Um, both it's an opportunity because there's a need out there and it's, it's a problem because it wasn't managed well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for submitting your application and congratulations to your son on, on his you. graduation. Um, Bittersweet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and just a question, um, you were a board member of the Minuteman Parent Association for four years and how did that experience or how would it make you a, a, a better school committee member and, and what you've gleaned from from that experience and, and you, you mentioned a little bit about the communication yeah, issues, but yeah. other things. So, so I would say that before the pandemic, I had the opportunity to be on campus more frequently. I just moved my schedule around accordingly when I could plan ahead. And so I had the opportunity to see things in action and meet a lot of the um, administrators and teachers, teachers that were outside of my son's program. And so I have a really good sense of how things work there. And I, and I also know the challenge of teachers giving the time to teach and do the work versus the time that they spend communicating. So when a teacher takes the time to explain to a parent, you know, what's happening with their student, what's happening with the curriculum, that's adding more time on their day. So part of the, the opportunity, I think, collectively for the school is to 
shore up the communications so that the teacher communications can focus on the teacher, parent, and that student at hand, and you're taking the burden off of the teachers of articulating what this curriculum is about and what we're going to do. There's parents' night, like there is in any school system, on, on what's covering, um, but the school's so different from regular public schools that there, you know, you can never uh, communicate too little. So there needs to be, you know, really focused strategic communication in multiple places, if you will, and communicate more often. Okay, thank you. And just one more question, Mr. Chairman, if I could. And, and, and this, just a question, I mean, a lot has happened in the last month, and you were one of the speakers here mm -hmm. at the public forum on, on May 22nd, and one of the things you had said that evening is that you'd very much like to be involved and participate in the process. And I don't know if you'd made up your, your, your mind that night mm -hmm. that you were going to apply. You sent us a letter on June 5th, but I'm just wondering how, even in that two-week period, how you went from you know, wanting to be involved and knowing what's happening to the process to actually putting your application in. Yeah, it's a great question um, because I, I thought about it long and hard because when I get involved in something, I really want to be all in and fully participate and you know get to know the stakeholders that I work with in that immediate group and, and the larger constituency. So it's a big commitment and I recognize that. Um, I'll tell you what the pivot point was for me. The pivot point for me was the in-person school committee meeting that we had and seeing the, again, the public passion that the teachers communicated about what this year had been like for them. Now, I was speaking with some teachers behind the scenes and they would share things with me, but to see honestly how their education environment had been disrupted during this year and how difficult it had been for them, I was like, this needs to be turned around. And there, isn't, there aren't better people to turn it around than passionate parents who care heart and soul about that school. So that was the pivot moment. And, and then I thought, oh my gosh, I have to be mindful of your deadlines. And so I double checked the deadlines and I think I made it in a few days before the application process. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you. So I, thank you for applying. I think I know how you're going to answer part of the question. Uh, but the first part I'm really interested in is like, what is your, th what are your thoughts about you know, the dynamics on the board? I think I know how you're going to answer the, uh, how you fit in. You know, but I may have something to ask right after that. Okay. So go ahead. Sarah. Okay. So we don't know n yet. There are a number of positions where the term is coming up, and we don't know yet what's happening in the other towns. We do know that there is interest in. Um, other parents from Lexington replacing the, the Lexington representative. Lexington and Arlington being the two largest stakeholders from a, a voting standpoint. Um, I think there needs to be change. At the same time, my style is not a combative one. I'm assertive, but I'm reasonable. I'm intensely curious, and I ask a lot of questions. So if I came in and worked with a number of folks that continued to be on the board, I would be frank with them coming in so that they know that I was among some of the parents that were very involved and very vocal and really wanted to see change. And we will need to make some changes in how we communicate and how we operate within the appropriate guidelines. But I, I wouldn't come in and, um, and be difficult to work with for those people, even though I do think that there needs to be significant change with the board. Thanks. So, um, so quickly, you know, the answer, the answer can't be both equally, all right? Mm -hmm. Are you more passionate about policy making or problem solving? Policy making or problem solving? Huh, that's a really interesting question. Are they, mutually, ex are they mutually exclusive, though? I think they're really interrelated. Yeah, they are. Tell me, wait, tell me more about your question. Tell me more, yeah. Well, because, because me, well, I mean, I like problem solving, you know, a, a lot, you know, uh, but I also like policy making. But if you ask me, <laughs> me, uh, me uh, and, and so, 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 the uh, policy making w would be perhaps the, the overnight parking. <laughs> uh, overnight, policy, overnight parking? You know, uh, which, problem. yeah, uh, which, which, which has an element, you know, of, of problem solving in it. But, but really, if someone says to me, you know, like, we, we, we need to, you know, um, be, Get town date going, you know. Uh, I mean, that's that's more of a, a problem solving, you know. And, and it's like me, I kind of like diving in uh, to to the the problem solving. And so so for me, I mean, if I had to pick one, you know, yep. 
you know, I'm generally a problem solver, you know, uh, you know but I, I have a real passion. So, so I was just kind of curious. You're applying for the position then, Mr. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mr. Dickens, maybe we should have two school committee representatives from the town of Arlington since yeah. our, our vote counts so big. So you want to you want to join whoever whoever, whoever is is. Uh, well, that was actually part of the the basis of the question early on. It's like, I mean, since we are the age, we do have a, a overweighting, you know. And I guess it's somewhere between twenty four and thirty, you know. Uh, uh, and but we only have one person doing that, as opposed to multiple people. I mean, how do you we kind of interact I mean, with your colleagues because that I mean, dare I say it just it'd be a very different board here if one of us we had twenty four percent of the vote and the other one I think it should be seniority. <laughs> but go ahead, back to your I, question. I think maybe we're straying from yeah. our mission here just a little bit as much fun as well, we're having. To get back to your original question, Mr. Diggins, so um, I, I have been trained I think uh, throughout my career that y you can't bring up problems or or talk about a problem unless you're part of the solution and you're coming with solutions and ideas. And I think that one does not come up with answers in a vacuum. One needs to go out, do the work, do the research, talk to constituents, really talk to the people that are impacted by the problem the most um, to understand sort of the way forward. And then the policy making is part of the process. So you've, you think that you've got a model for solving the problem what's the policy and what are the steps in implementing getting that done. So in that sense, I think that they're interconnected. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think we got there in the end. <laughs> Good. Um, thank you for your, for your interest and for your passion, for sure. Um, I think I'd, I'd like to invite you to, to think about, um, I think you, you signal an awareness that you know, there are limitations to what the school, school committee can do. But you seem to, I think that you've uh, signaled that you have some clear ideas for some change and maybe a change in direction. If you'd like to expand on, you know, where you think that the school has, is going long term, short term, and what you think you're within your, within the, what the constraints of what a school committee member to do, you know, what, what you would kind of do in that role to try to steer things into the, to a, perhaps a better direction. Yeah. Thank you for that question. So I think a lot about, the way that I understood that Minuteman worked um, as a parent coming into the school and my experience in the first couple of years. And um, Dr. B and Kevin and others were instrumental in being externally facing for a lot of years to build the foundation for where the school is today. My observations over the last year have been that the superintendent, the new superintendent, was much too internally focused, almost operating at you know a few clicks down, if you will, operating like a principal, and um, that's that's not what's needed. So, I think that there needs to be, particularly if the school is going to continue to get funding and if the school is going to continue to grow new programs and potentially add new schools, there needs to be advocacy work out in these towns, and it, it starts with the superintendent and the school committee members have a role in that too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other questions for me? Do you have a question for us? I do. Um, so let's say that there is a change here with the Arlington representative. How do you all anticipate that your role in liaising with that individual might change? What ideas do you have about that? Um, Mrs. Mahan. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to wait to the very end, but you just gave me a segue to that. Um, one of the things that I've learned from this process is that myself as a member of the select board, as well as my colleagues, um, need to do a better job. When people have come to us, especially where, and, and thank you for, um, and the chairman for uh, opening this process and sort of redefining something that we really hadn't done before. I think we've created a great model for that. But um, what I would like for um, if, if the individual is, is returned to uh, our Minuteman representative or if it's, if it's somebody different, brand new, um, more of an interface um, with the select board so that not only can we answer questions that, that we really should know, at least a basic knowledge, we don't need to know every single number and how many staff is, uh, is in a particular program, mechanical engineering. Um, but um, 
also so that we have the information. Right now, how do I get information besides being proactive and going out and saying, do you know a Minuteman parent? Uh, can you get me someone in the Minuteman Teachers Union? Because that's very important to me. Is you know, I, I get all my information from the Minuteman Facebook page, but um, I would hope that our, or expect that our Minuteman uh, representative would create some sort of a vehicle that picks the best of the best of the information that goes out from Minuteman, whether it's the superintendent, whether it's the uh, principal, and or could be a collaboration, the parents association, and at least, you know, once a year gives us a general overview, either at the beginning or the end, an introduction or a wrap up, as well as establish what works with the Minuteman representative for that news, as Mr. Ruderman um, brought forth about the National Skills USA, things about that, because we do have, our chairman now has um, board announcements as part of our agenda, um, and we do extol things that we come across and I was sitting here thinking except for when I was coaching cheerleading so I knew about the cheerleading program up at um, Minuteman great cheerleading program um, you know I that was all I was bringing to the table um, so if you could um, and we do have that on, on the Arlington High School side as well as the other schools where either Dr. Homan um, sends individual board members or through the board administrator her message one to three times a year or anything like that. So I'd like to see that so that I'm not left off guard where, and I'm the first one to say I don't know, but I'll get you the answer, but I'd like to have the answer seven times out of ten. And then um, the other thing <coughs> is whatever you can do, I really, whoever is the returning representative or new, um, I'm very concerned, not that other people aren't, uh, regarding what I've heard just informally, as well as watching uh, the Lex Media coverage of the meetings from our teachers at, at, at Minuteman High School. Um, and one of the things that really concerned me, and I, I can't remember if her name was Paula, but one of the things that she said is um, two things. First of all, we very rarely uh, come before you and express our opinion or uh, demand something or are critical of something. Uh, but then the other thing she said was, and I think she was the president, that um, the two important times that we've, the two issues we've come before you that have been very important and have been affecting us in terms of our job vis-a-vis -vis the custom of the children, we do not feel heard at all. We feel totally ignored. And that I am very, very concerned about. Uh, as a parent, I'm not a parent anymore, I'm a grandparent. Oh, you don't look old enough to be a grandparent. Thank you. But, um, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> um, I, so I'm, I would ask the Minuteman representative to put that on your top three or top five um, things where we are 24% of the vote. And then the only other thing, which I think you're doing it with 103, but where it is a trade school, but it's um, electrical, plumbing, mechanical engineering, et cetera, um, I think really fostering, and I'd certainly be willing to work on this, fostering relationships with the unions that we have. We have Frank Callahan, Arlington resident, who's on the permanent town building committee for Arlington High School, but he's also president of the Massachusetts Allied B B Building Trades Group, uh, as well as we have other labor leaders in here that I was just at an event this morning that I saw you name a craft or a trade, uh, mechanical engineering, STEM, plumbing, electric, you know, tin knockers, all the things. They all, I was talking to them about minute, well, they brought it up to me at an event at a funeral. Um, and, and they said, you know, the unions are always here, especially with building that. And Luan Ionelli from 103 says he, he does have a relationship, but it could be more. Because those programs are the ones that once our kids, our young women and men, get the trade from most of what Minuteman teaches up there, there's fantastic apprenticeship programs that you can get, and you don't have to go on and work for a union. Right. But you get that apprenticeship, which is the next step. Yep. 
So the, un the union idea is outstanding. There's also a huge opportunity tapping into the Minuteman alumni network. Those are future employers as well. So much like when you go to school these days, if you go to college, you, you leave with your school email intact. You're always available through that school email. And one of the things as the Minuteman Parent Association that we said early on was, can we set up the same thing for the students so when they go out, they're always reachable so that when we need to connect a student with uh, an, an apprenticeship, um, an internship, a future job, um, when we need to raise money. There's, there, we raised a ton of money for scholarships when I was in the Minuteman Parent Association. That need never goes away. And if we can tap into the alumni, they are so willing to give. Um, when they know that it's going for a scholarship, either for tools, supplies, or towards things that are needed in college, there's a variety of things that the students can do with these scholarships. Thank you, and I monopolize that question. I apologize. Anybody else want to respond? Mr. Dickens. Dickens. So I'll add a few things, but briefly, you know, so um, contact, um, be in touch with the town manager. You know, I think the town manager would very much appreciate hearing, you know, from our representative what's going on at Benedict Tech, and that way I would get my information through the town manager since I have regular conversations with that person. Uh, and the other is to avail yourself, I mean, of the mailing list that we have in town, I mean, um, so there's a town-wide uh, mailing list, I mean, and so I think if you have announcements about what's going on at Minuteman Tech, that'd be a good way to get it out to the whole community. And then you could ask to have a sub, a smaller mailing list that's only devoted towards I mean, um, Minuteman Tech, and you'd probably be surprised at how many people who do not have kids at Minuteman Tech would still subscribe to that because the town is full of curious people, you know, yeah. with strong feelings. <laughs> so, so, so that's it. Thanks. I think my response to that would be, um, everything I've heard sounds good. Uh, I think it would be a good idea for whoever the representative is to, to stay in touch with the financial managed leadership of the town. Mm -hmm. um, I think that working closely with the member of the finance committee who works with the Finite Man budget and working closely with either the town manager or the deputy town manager for finance to really understand what the uh, short range, mid range, and long range picture is for Arlington's burden, particularly in the capital that, that Mr. DeCourcy is talking about. Perhaps even talking with Mr. DeCourcy would be somebody who probably among us who understands the most about that issue of it. But I think that as, uh, you know, I, the ringing endorsement that we hear all the time, we've heard from this board and the I will third or fourth, is for the, for the value of the school. No one questions that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it is, you know, it is, it is, um, it costs what it costs to provide that level of services. And I think that there's a growing awareness just from the, as we talk to the taxpayers of the town about how we spend our money that um, I don't think it's difficult to justify the value because students, students get extraordinary value. Um, but to really understand what we can do to look towards helping to ease the burden of, of Arlington's uh, financial burden what, when we can without sacrificing the, the value to the students. So I think those are, those are difficult uh, things to do, but that's when I think about um, representing the town's interests the first thing I think of is the students who attend the school. That is absolutely my biggest priority. But I think we also have a responsibility to, to our finances. So that's, that's how I would think about that as well. That's a good question. Thank you. Um, I think we can uh, wrap, wrap that up. Thank you very much. Thanks. And um, I'm checking with my colleagues. Does anyone need a, uh, a brief recess or a break before we move, proceed with nominations? Um, uh, well, a day or two or three or four, but I know we're going to finish tonight. <laughs> so, so, yeah, okay. sure. Okay, so uh, so here, here, I think what I'd like to do is entertain a motion to open nominations, and then we'll take a vote on that. And you know, at that point, I'll invite members to submit nominations, and then when we're done, we'll close nominations. Then we can have further discussion about the candidates who are nominated, and then uh, at that point, we'll move to a vote. So, uh, Mrs. Mahan. First, I'd like to do the procedural part of that, which is make a motion to open nominations for our representative to the Minuteman School Committee. Second. All right, so on a motion to open nominations by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Nominations are open. Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, Ms. Marsden. Um, you have a special place in my heart for um, what you do. Um, in the amount of energy, first, the amount of energy and passion that you need for your family, um, as well as uh, what you do for your profession. Um, my family circumstances, when I was reading this, I was 
remember saying, oh, I want to run up and get a hug from her because that, that definitely would help. But then I also wanted to say, maybe I could talk to her about A, B, and C. So I want to, I want to thank you for what, for, for what you do and for um, being here tonight and sitting here the whole night and listening to this when you could have gone home right away. Um, I, every person who came up to the table, I was like, I want to nominate that person. Oh, no, it's going to be that person. It, 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 it's, ugh. Uh, and it, it sounds corny when you say, well, the good news is it's going to be regardless. But to get the process going, um, I would like to make a motion to nominate uh, Miss, is it Montague? Is that how, Montague? Um, to be our representative at the Minutemen School Committee and be brief, Mahan. And the reason I say that is um, having watched um, previous, I, I would say starting since January, um, when people were sending me links and in the rest of the board and we can't talk about it one on one, one on two, one on three. We can only talk about it at a meeting, but I know the rest of the board also um, has been aware of it. But really following this issue, thinking of all the different best, vested interests that are um, in play right now um, and not speaking to a past superintendent, a current superintendent, or a future superintendent, because I have no business speaking to that. But just um, in terms of the parent constituency, the teacher constituency, the administration, the school committee moving forward, and I know Lexington, um, I don't know if it'll be Judy still, but we'll see, I don't, um, that would, would fill those uh, three roles. That, that's why I would like to make a motion for Ms. Montague. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll second Mrs. Mahan's motion, and, and I just want to thank everybody for putting their names forward. And I had mentioned my experience with Minuteman, and, and it goes back to the to the mid '90s, where there were years where they, the moderator in the town couldn't even find somebody to be on the school committee. And the fact that we had five individuals here, all of you have a connection to Minuteman, all of you care passionately about Minuteman. That is very clear and I really appreciate your willingness to come here and, and, and um, put, put your applications forward and, and the, the tough, we have a lot of interesting things, a lot of good things that we do as a select board. One of the most difficult things is, and we've had this a few times, is we have people who come before us and, and, and we, you know, if we could, we'd, we'd put, put you on, we, we only can select one and, and um, I, I'm going to, to, to second Mrs. Mrs. Mahan's motion. I was impressed with everybody. I think that, that the experience that Ms. Montague has with being on the Parent Association, um, just having a senior who's graduated, so you're close enough to know what's happened, but just you don't have the student there right now. And I think I think that's important for for perspective. And and I just saw again. I mentioned you came in here that night on May 22nd. But, just hearing how you got from that point to this point, I found very compelling. So um, I want to thank everybody. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know where we're going to end up as a board, and, and I'm sorry for those that we're uh, not voting for, but um, I, I'm, I, I will second Mrs. Mahan's motion. Other nominations? Yeah. Did you so, do an additional nomination? Oh, no, I'll wait. I'll okay, so yeah, we'll do a discussion after we close nomination. Well, I don't want to do a disservice, you know, and put the board, you know, in a difficult situation or a disservice to the person uh, that, you know, I want to nominate because I, 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 I do like, you know, um, I'm sorry, blank out Ms. Bonagues, um, um passion, I mean, and her experience, I mean, and I think she'd be um, very good on the school committee. But I have to say, you know, I'm really impressed by um, um, Ms. Horgan, you know, um, a lot, you know, I mean, and as with Ms. Marston, who is a, a social worker, I mean, for me, I know we pay I mean, a lot of respect I mean, to um, veterans, I mean, and police officers and firefighters, I mean, but I think social workers are the real heroes uh, in our society because of um, the hard work that they do, I mean, um, uh, just year in and year out, I mean, um, and through the decades, I mean, uh, um, it's really, really hard, hard work, it's heartbreaking work. And, um, and, and um, her history in town here is really impressive. I mean, she has board experience, you know, and, and, and she just 
exudes a certain calmness, I think, that would be really good you know, in a tough situation. You know, um, I just think there's a steadfastness I mean, that you know, I think you know, um, will, would really do the, the school committee um, well. You know, uh, but I said, I, I, I feel badly about creating it, you, it, 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 it's, it's, there's, actually, there's no problem in having more than one nomi no, nominee. Yeah. Uh, nominee. Yeah. We can yeah. then you know, take that, and then we can take votes, and then we can narrow it down if we need to. Yeah. So yeah. I, okay. I would encourage you, Mr. Dickens, if you, you have a candidate that you prefer to, to nominate that person. Yeah, it's not really a matter of preferring yeah. one. Or that you, less, that you, that you want to have. A, I think yeah. I, the way I think of it is if there's a candidate that you'd like the board to really consider. Yes, yes, and I'd like for us very much to consider Ms. Horgan. So that is Ann Horgan? Yeah. And I'll, I will second that just as a courtesy, but I also think that is a, a very defensible choice. But, uh, Mr. I was going to second the nomination. Okay, well, I'll give it to you then. Where yeah. then you want to wait for a discussion until we close nomination? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Motion to close nominations. Second. second. Yeah. All right. So, on a uh, any discussion? So I didn't do it the first time. But <laughs> on a motion to close nominations by Mr. Hurd and seconded by M uh, Mrs. Mahan. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. All right. So nominations are closed. The board has before them uh, Sarah Montague and Ann Horgan. Discussion. Uh, to, uh, uh, Mr. Hurd. Um, I would just say I, I was impressed by all the candidates. Um, er everyone came up and showed a passion for the school and unique perspectives and really genuine reasons why they wanted to serve in their capacity. And I was certainly impressed by both candidates. Um, I, I think the difference for me is that I was kind of trying to grapple my head around should it be a current parent? Student, the current parent of a student, current student, parent of a current student. <laughs> nine nine o'clock hits me, and I'm usually hitting the, cut, the pillow. But, or, you know, someone that has experience as a past parent, and I think Miss Montague has a, this unique experience where she, in serving, will be a past parent, but. A lot's happened in the past year at the school. Um, there's a lot of opinions, and I'm certainly not qualified to talk about it at all. But I think, for me, this the Minuteman School Committee representative, technically the constitu constituency is the whole town of Arlington, but I think mainly it is parents and students and teachers that live in Arlington that that work there and I spoke with a number of parents and teachers and I think having a parent who doesn't have a kid there but has gone through sort of the turbulence of the past year is a pretty unique perspective um, in addition to all your wonderful qualifications and um, clearly a passion to serve in the position. Like I said, everyone is qualified. This is one of the worst things we do in this board is have to pick people. Generally, we're just appointing people who one person applies for three spots. So this is a unique experience. But So I do want to thank everyone that was willing to step up and serve. Other discussion? I have nothing to add to my what I said to my nomination. So it's a... Nothing. I, 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 I guess yeah, thank looking you. at you. <laughs> yeah, looking at me, yeah, no. Um, I wholeheartedly agree. I think that I think everybody we heard from tonight has something to contribute, and it's unquestionable in my mind that everybody we heard from tonight loves Minuteman, and that is a great unifying thing. Um, I I think we have two candidates, two nominees in front of us who I think I think everybody was was impressive in different ways, um, but I'm very comfortable with both of them. Um, I uh, think at this point. We can take a vote and see where we are. So um, let's do this by a roll call. And Ms. Mara, if you would be. Um, I'll watch. Can I be on the spot? 
I am putting you on. I am putting you on the spot. So you know, I think what we'll, what we'll just we'll just go uh, member by member. You just go down the go down the table and just ask which which person that we're going to vote for, and we'll, right. we'll do that. So, um, but I'll be, before that, I'll pause and check in um, with with Attorney Hyde to make sure that I'm I'm good to go and there's nothing I have forgotten procedurally speaking, sir. You've opened nominations, received them, and closed nominations, Mr. Chair. If there's no further discussion and you just want to go down the line as long as you've got a majority on the first round you'll have appointed your candidate if you don't have a majority in the first round um, you can have further discussion and either vote again or decide to uh, suspend the discussion for further uh, further contemplation I would also just add that uh, in the event that you um, have a split vote but you have a majority uh, there's nothing wrong with the board affirming the candidate uh, that gets the majority of votes unanimously later, if that makes sense. Hey, Mr. Chairman, yes. could you just explain for either, probably not people here, but people watching at home, um, if, like, say, someone made a motion that, well, why don't we table this and wait until July or August to do this? Could you explain why? That's an excellent question. I think that the reason... Uh, that we decide to move forward now is that the current term expires June 30th, and we think that you know, it's really important that Arlington have um, current representation, you know, at the table um, at all times with the Minutemen, particularly with all the changes that are that are going on right now. So. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Attorney Heim. Uh, we we appreciate that, and uh, you know, I've learned to always listen to you, and I'm glad that glad, <laughs> glad to check in. Okay, so we have nominations for Sarah Montague and a nomination for Ann Horgan. So, Ms. Mara, if you would go, if you would call the roll. Sure, Mrs. McCartney. Ms. Montague. Mr. Hurd. Ms. Montague. Mr. Helmut. Ms. Montague. Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, Ms. Montague. And Mr. Diggins. Ms. Horgan. All right, we have a four-to-one vote to appoint Ms. Montague with two outstanding nominees. Um, at this point, I would invite the board. Um, to have that take the opportunity to make the, the, the second vote, if, if Mr. Dickens, that would be the if you want to if you want to uh, take a second vote to make the choice unanimous, or we can leave it as a four-one vote. Oh, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll stick with my four-one. Okay, yeah. very good. So we have a four-to-one vote, um, and I believe that concludes uh, that agenda item. Congratulations, uh, Ms. Montague, and thank you for your willingness. Thank you to every person tonight who is willing to serve. It is an embarrassment of riches. And it's part of what makes Arlington such a terrific town is that the volunteers step up to do the hard work. And it is hard work ahead of you, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. We have on the agenda board and staff announcements. So uh, I will go ahead and go with that. Ms. Mahar. Ms. Mar. No board announcements tonight, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Mrs. Mahan. No board announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hurd. None. Mr. DeCourcy. No announcements. I'll save it for Monday at the long meeting. <laughs> this is the first. My only announcement is that our next meeting is Monday, <laughs> June the 26th, 23, uh, 2023. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. So we have a motion to adjourn from Mr. Diggins, a second by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? He's unanimous. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.